a really a big welcome to um, any new families and students. So um, it's really good to have you here. Well, yeah, I just wanted to start off with a land acknowledgement. Um, our school site is located on Dakota and Ojibwe lands uh, with a really deep, rich history. Um, check the Bedote memory map for more information. Um, this is a picture of what we call today Fort Snelling. Uh, there's my video, so that's what it looked like. <laughs> Um, thanks, Stacy. So I just wanted to give a shout out to David. Welcome, David Nunez. Hi, welcome everybody. Um, should I jump in with my few words here, Tammy? Yeah, that sounds yes. great. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Welcome everybody. Um, I'm David Nunez. I'm the interim head of school at Great River this year. You probably know that, but uh, really excited to welcome you all to a new school year. We've been working really hard these past couple of days and weeks at Great River, and I can't wait to welcome the students back to our building in just a few days here. Um, and I'm new, of course, but I did want to say it's been a wonderful two months so far uh, since July 1st, since my start date, meeting staff, meeting some students who are around in the summer, getting to know the building. Um, and I'm excited to share uh, real briefly that I'm also not just the head of school, but I will soon be a Great River parent. My son is going to be starting in the seventh grade and my stepchild is going to be starting in the sixth grade this year at Great River. Um, and one last thing that I wanted to share uh, is our communication plan this year, um, which I'll jump in real quickly and share a few details of it just because I have your attention. So, um, you know, uh, Great River, um, due to our equity focus in many ways, we want to ensure that students and caregivers feel well informed about what's happening at Great River throughout the year. And so we have a couple different ways that we communicate. It's gonna look a little different than it has in the past, but be really fundamentally pretty similar. We have our announcement blogs and an automated daily update email. Um, and our announcement blog um, is, you can access it at our website specifically. Um, and we'll update that with non-urgent school announcements, upcoming events, activities, volunteer opportunities. Um, and this year, we're also going to use an email service um, to send the new announcements out daily. Um, and all families, just to be clear, all families will be opted into these level specific announcements, and you'll receive a daily email digest of any announcements. If you don't want to receive these emails, though, if you just want to check out the blog, um, you can certainly do that and you can just unsubscribe. There's a link at the bottom of the daily update. So if you're not happy getting the daily updates, that is not a problem at all. Please feel free to um, unsubscribe to it and just check out the blog and on your own time. Um, so there are three, uh, there's an elementary, a lower adolescent and an upper adolescent uh, level specific blog. Um, and uh, we also will be sending out just to be clear, um, uh, oh, and if you're not receiving those emails from those blogs, please email office at greatriverschool.org so we can troubleshoot what's going on. It's possible that we don't have the right information for you in PowerSchool, and we want to make sure that we do have the right email address. You may also receive uh, direct emails in case of an urgent communication. You might receive an email from me, David Nunez, or from Stacy Krieger, or from uh, Great River School uh, with more information specifically. And then we're also going to be sending out, we're going back to sending out a monthly newsletter to families on the first Monday of the month, um, with some exceptions, depending on the school calendar. But the newsletters should feature student accomplishments and events at the school. And if you don't receive those, again, reach out to office at Great River School to make sure that your contact information is good. And then finally, uh, social media. So uh, Great River School um, has Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Um, and we also have family Facebook pages um, that uh, like the Great River School community, Great River Elementary Parents, Great River Lower Elementary Parents, Great River, Great River uh, 
sorry, that should be lower adolescent, Great River upper adolescent parents, um, all of those uh, Facebook feeds that we don't maintain specifically, um, but they're good resources for connecting with other families at the school. So now I'll hand the mic back to Tammy uh, to talk through the, uh, her slides in the year and all of that, but I'm gonna stay on to answer any questions that might come up. So um, welcome everyone, thank you. Thanks, David, and uh, welcome to you too. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here. So, um, what is lower adolescence? Uh, lower adolescence is grades seven through nine at Great River um, and throughout um, the world at all these different Montessori schools. There's over a million students in Montessori schools in the US alone. And those adolescent students, grades seven through nine, are usually called lower adolescents or uh, junior high. So um, we have a team of, of, of about 30 faculty members and uh, a little under 200 students. And it's this intense focus of the humanity of the student uh, during the transitional time from childhood to adolescence, that very beautiful time that you can watch them grow and try things in their life and see who they wanna be and change their mind. Um, really become different people as they grow. So um, we like to talk about um, in Montessori pedagogy that there are four planes of development, the infancy, childhood, adolescence, and maturity. And so we are focused from 12 to 15 in lower adolescence. And you'll see that it is um, black. Sometimes it's also red in color um, images. And it mirrors uh, the infancy plane. And when we're going down slope in either one, it's a very fiery period. It's a period of intense construction of the person. So um, if you've raised a child before this one, or been a part of it in maybe uh, a different family or friends, um, you know that there's a lot going on from 12 to 15 and the student is constructing themselves. Really, they are going into the social independence. This very much of a graduation from their family. Um, it is what Montessori quotes as the sensitive period for belonging. So they're really focused on um, how do they fit into their school group, their friend group, their community? They're focused on themselves. Um, you know, maybe it's looking more in the mirror, but also like, who really am I? That independence and the concern for society, those big social justice issues. Um, this is the time where they feel like they can start to make change and they can, they actually do make quite a bit of change in there. Um, but also a really intense need for structure, even though that they don't want it. Um, they <laughs> do need the boundaries to be held, um, but a very strong need for empathy and caring and an understanding that there's a lot going on. Um, so that is some of the pedagogy and uh, will be doing more work around the Montessori pedagogy for anyone that's interested, um, maybe in December. So one of these family education nights. So um, look for that if this is interesting to you. So the GRS lexicon, oh my goodness, I can't get it, there it is. So we have advisory um, and some of you might've heard about this and kind of equated a little bit to homeroom but it is um, a lot more. There's a lot of social, emotional learning. It's the connecting point of every single day in the morning. Um, it's the executive functioning piece that is developing during this time as well. And it's in seventh and eighth, you'll have the same guide for two years to sort of care and watch over you as the student and you as the family. CAST is Creativity, Action, and Service. It's something you're student or you as the student are doing most Wednesday afternoons. And um, it's like it says, it's a time for you 
to um, learn different ways of expressing yourself through creativity, through action or physical movement and service to others. And, you know, what does it feel like to receive gratitude or to give gratitude to others? Or, you know, what's your role in the community? Um, key experiences are the three experiences we have in the seven heat, which we'll talk more about. It's um, the fall relationship building, which looks different this year, and um, the humanities intensive and, or sorry, the theater intensive and um, the bike trip at the end of the year. So uh, that one's my favorite. <laughs> um, oh, there they are. And we'll talk more about those. Occupations are science standards through real and relevant work out in the community or in our own community at Great River. And independent work is a gradual buildup from a guided work cycle to independently constructed use of time. Um, back in the day when I was in high school, I would have equated this um, to study hall, but at Great River, it's much more guided. Um, that piece of how do you build your day? Uh, what do we need to get work? What do we need to get done this week? And is there a project you need to do collaborative work on with the peer? So um, that is centered in our classroom structure. And also on Wednesday morning, really that time by the end of the year, they're, they're on their own fledgling and hopefully by the time they're eighth graders able to plan out and use that time really well. And if you need support, um, all these things we can help you with. We have um, Ori is our social worker. Asha is our student wellness and equity coordinator. Matt is our dean of students. Jim is our academic interventionist and I'm your, your program director. So if at any point you need support, you could reach out to any of us. Also, your advisor is a great person to, to reach out to um, with any sort of these things uh, with, listed on the side here. And students will be finding out their schedules and advisors, all those things near Friday um, is, I mean, really what we're hoping for. So <laughs> that's, that is what we're planning. So after, you know, I just want to acknowledge that we've had quite a year and a half. Maybe, um, maybe some of us are feeling it more than others. And um, just a moment of silence for those struggles that we've been experiencing. And Victor Frankl is, um, he wrote in a book, Man's Search for Meaning, he's a Holocaust survivor. And he talks in the book about how he survived the Holocaust in the concentration camp. In some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering. At the moment, it finds meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice. So um, what we're struggling to really understand in the lower adolescence is why, what, what is all of this struggling for? And we, wanted, we really wanna continue to take the time to change how we teach and learn, what we teach and learn, and how we look at the world and sort of be in the world. So um, we are, we talked about this last year at orientation and just continuing this theme and it shows up in almost every single one of our conversations in, in service this week. Um, today we talked about grading and the, the underlying policy that we talked about was it's equity for grading. So, um, and grading for equity. So um, that is sort of the framework of lower adolescence. And so our key experiences, as you know, we are not going on the Odyssey in the fall. Um, instead, we're focusing and we're working super hard with faculty. Um, this experience of working and redreaming of what, our students need right now, reaffirms that we have some very brilliant guides, some very creative guides and some very flexible guides. Um, so 
by not taking the Odyssey, we are prioritizing in-person learning for the entire year. And that feels super important. Um, we're gonna do sort of day trips and we're gonna focus on relationship building between students and students and guides. So there are two extended day trips that begin at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And um, we'll talk a little bit more at the end of the slide deck about um, our parent engagement group and how they support us immensely throughout the whole year. But it begins in mere moments, it seems like with carpools available and accommodations that we make. If you need to drop your student off at eight or 8.30 as usual, or you need a carpool on the way home. We wanna make that as accessible as possible. Um, but so more information will come out about that as soon as we can finalize things. Um, make sure we're getting those med forms turned in because if we are out um, in the field, as we say it as guys, and your student needs a Benadryl because of a bee sting, that having that form from that signed from your doctor makes it a lot quicker for your students. So um, I'll send those forms out in an email today or tomorrow. I know you've gotten them before, but sometimes it's handy to have them at your fingertips. So um, we're doing three theater intensives throughout the year. Um, well, I'll talk about that in our next slide of how J term is changing one with our student body size, but also due to COVID. So similar experience, probably a richer and deeper experience. We we're gonna do it anyway, and COVID just made it easier. Um, but we're gonna put on a play and students are gonna put on the play and students are in charge of the whole shebang. So it is an intense focus of going outside of our comfort zone, working on real tasks cooperatively, creating some microeconomic adventures. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing what comes out of them. And then this bike trip for seven through nine in June, I'm gonna just keep saying we're going on the bike trip. Um, it, it will be the first time we've done a seven through nine, but it is important that we get those ninth graders with us, um, not only for the leadership, but for the experience. So um, we help students who have no idea how to ride a bike and we can teach them how to ride a bike. Um, it helps that most of the time that we're not their parents um, or their caregivers. So um, it helps when we teach them how to ride a bike. We have bikes if you need them, helmets if you need them. Um, it takes a while, but we are going to bike uh, 108 miles over five days if we get the route that we want. And I will tell you, you walk out of that bike trip like you are on fire and you can do anything. It is so powerful. So I am hopeful and I keep telling David, we're going on that bike trip. <laughs> so um, we might have to will it into existence maybe. We will see what COVID brings us. So this is our schedule of our year. We've got these first two weeks of fall community building. So on Tuesday, students are coming for five days of orientation. And then we'll take Tuesday through Friday, the following week to do the day trip. And um, students are ready to go into quarter one and it's broken up in A and B cycles. So four weeks throughout each one. And uh, one of these A's and B's, your student will have a theater intensive. So a small group instead of a hundred and 20 or 130, a smaller group of about 45 will put on a play. Two reasons, it helps the students hold the play more. It helps it be more student directed overall and less guide directed. And uh, we don't have to fit as many of you into the J-term theater space at school, um, hopefully. So it helps with our COVID, um, precautions too. But, you know, um, this year we've got a rendition of the Snow Queen written by two local artists. Um, it's important for me to mention that even though the Snow Queen is a Scandinavian um, 
play, or it comes from Hans Christian Andersen, um, one of our local artists is, that is writing it is Tyler, who you might know from years previously, um, but also another uh, person of color playwright. Or uh, we, we probably don't know him in this community. So um, they are rewriting it to bring in less of the Eurocentric view here that is uh, usually present with the Snow Queen. These quarters um, include three sessions of occupations and three sessions of humanities. And occupations are the STEM, humanities are the language arts and social studies. So um, more information is gonna be coming out. These are some theater intensive dates your students will be coming more familiar. I don't wanna give you too much information right now. Um, I think I would overwhelm you about um, what when your student is in the theater intensive, but that will come. At the end of the year, nearing the end of the year, we've got Community Action Month. That was super successful last year. Um, students found a way to make meaningful change in their community. So we'll keep that. It's a year long project underlying all of these aspects. Um, and then our bike trip at the end. Stacy has a question or- an well, I don't have a question, but Jennifer Rogers has a question. Um, and I think Bill, we're on this slide. It makes sense to answer it. What do the A and B represent within the quarters? Can you explain just, that a little better? Yeah, just student groups. So like um, your student will sort of be in a big group and we'll split them into two and they'll flip flop between there. Um, so one A, I can't show you, <laughs> one A, if you can see my cursor, um, this could be occupation with Michael, and then they would flip to humanities with Emily. So they'll flip back and forth. Um, it's really just a way to say they get humanities each quarter and occupation each quarter, except when you have the theater intensive. If this was supposed to be your humanities, you would quit, get it back here. So um, yeah, that's just to say that's trying to graphically represent what's in our brain in a very complicated way. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. But um, usually we have another family info night in October. It's usually needed. We'll talk about standards-based grading and probably more about the schedule throughout the year. Thanks, Jennifer. Schedule of the day. So I put uh, the seven, eight, and the nine, and the UA on here. And we wanna focus on the seven, eight, but you can see that they're all lining up, which is a really nice feature um, for our school because it means that our ninth graders can take creative expressions with us. Um, and lend us their leadership, lend us their skills, um, and change sort of how we look at lower adolescents. Um, so students come in and every day except Wednesday, Wednesday they have an hour of advisory. Every other day they have 40 minutes. Um, we're talking about things, social emotional learning. We're really helping students do their planner organizing, keeping their self organized, um, celebrating fun, celebrating uh, the different months like AAP, AAPI month, things like that. Um, and also a check-in every morning. So we understand that this last year was hard and we understand that going back to school might be hard. So um, we're building in the space to hold that peace and to care for students with love, build a community um, and make time for celebration. So then students will go into their humanities or occupation block, math block for about an hour. Um, silent sustained reading, SSR will talk about. They have lunch in their classrooms, in their advisories. Um, and that might be something that's hard for students to understand. So what we need your help with adults is helping the students understand that um, Lunches are silent in their advisory. It's the one time masks are off and it's, it to us, 
it's the most um, important time to keep all those uh, droplets from coming out of our mouth. So we'll listen to podcasts, we'll watch movies, um, students will have a hand in what we wanna do during this time. But that lunch is silent. But every student seven through nine has recess. So then after that silent lunchtime, there's some time to go hang out with the whole seven, nine together, see your friends, meet new people, run around, play soccer, frisbee, um, hopscotch, <laughs> whatever it may be, uh, visit the goats or the chickens. So then in the afternoons, we have creative expression. Those are classes like culinary art, um, urban farming, foundations of art, vocal music, instrumental music, all sorts of things. And your student gets enrolled in them. Um, so they rotate through those on a quarter or semester basis, just depending on the schedule of our upper adolescent guides that come down and teach those classes, like Carolyn or Zach Scott. So um, care of the environment is practical life skills that really extend all the way down to um, children's house, knowing how to sweep the floor is still very important. And uh, families, you can also reinforce those skills in your own home. Uh, <laughs> Sweeping the floor, we probably don't do a lot of dishes, but if you're in culinary arts, you will learn how to do dishes in a sanitary way, those kind of things. So, um, and then it's guide prep in the afternoon. So that is a general look at the schedule and you'll receive your specific schedule on hopefully Friday. And so here's SSR. So it is a targeted, intervention um, that we've had a couple times throughout the existence of Great River. This time it's coming in as a universal intervention for all students to really develop a love of reading or sustain that love of reading wherever you're at. Identify those that need extra support. Um, the pandemic may have been hard on some. So let's See where you were at. It's every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for a half an hour. Sometimes it is silent reading. Sometimes you're reading a book club um, for Emily Hanrahan's humanities class. Um, they're all ordering books. It's great. And um, sometimes you're giving each other feedback on reading um, or comprehension questions or I really like this book. Sometimes it's reading the first chapter of a book to spark interest. Um, guided reading is so important for students to hear at this age. Um, we are right at the critical point in seventh and eighth grade of students being able to go from very proficient readers to then reading in the content area and being able to take those like textbook quality or journal papers and being able to understand what it says. So we're bridging that gap a little bit. Um, we'll get summative end of term grades and formative checkbooks, checkpoints, maybe checkbooks too along the way. Um, so we're happily we're happy to accept donations of books that are of interest to this age group. Um, and so what does that look like? Some of our students are reading dogman books, and some of our students are reading graphic novels. Some of our students are reading. Um, the Hobbit, or even uh, books that go beyond that. So if you are in the, the, the part of donating books, I know, I know you can donate them to us. So um, send them on over. So talking about reading at home, how you can support, talking about reading, talking about the books that your student is reading, and reading yourself and showing your student that you are reading. I know I read all the time, read, 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 but I do it in like a hidey hole in my house or at like two in the morning or something. So my kids rarely see me reading. Maybe they know I'm reading because I'm carrying around a stack of books. Um, and reaching out to us if you need books in your house um, or you need help, help you notice your student is um, 
not reading, let us know and we can help point them in the right direction. So um, that's a little bit about SSR. And standards-based grading. So this was one big, huge change we made last year. And we, it usually takes about five years to get the whole community, teachers, students, families, um, school with the Empower School, um, really integrated in standards-based grading and understanding what is happening. It is um, focused on equity. It is a focus on the growth mindset. So the student that knows they can do it and has a positive outlook on where they're going, or maybe it's a, I don't know how to do that math problem yet. Um, that yet part shows up a lot. And it's a focus on feedback and learning rather than the outcome. So it's a focus on the process, not specifically just the outcome anymore. So your student can expect a unit plan with learning outcomes, and you can too as an adult, um, posted on the Schoology web pages, if that's the right word, <laughs> um, for each of your classes and sort of to know what are the formatives coming up and what are the summatives coming up. Um, you can expect rich feedback from guides, peers uh, in that peer reflection cycle and the self-reflection cycle. A focus on a week's worth of learning, not discrete missing assignments. So you won't see zeros for missing work. Instead, you'll see a one with a little, a little tag that says missing or a one with incomplete demonstration of knowledge or something like that. So if you're seeing one in the grade book, um, that is a, a case for intervention of some sort. Um, and we're really looking at a demonstration of knowledge. We'll talk more about this in October of like, what does this all mean? Um, but we're focused on the end product, not the nitty gritty, did you turn in every single three point assignment? How's your learning? Do you effectively understand this? So this might lead to students and families thinking, well, then I don't even need to do the formative work if, it's, if it isn't focused on, but you do. It would be like um, trying to cook um, something extremely difficult. Bao buns, they're so hard for me to perfect. Um, and every little step along the way, every time I try, and I get better at it each time I practice, leads to a better album in the end. Um, so guides are giving, my family's giving feedback when the albums are terrible. Um, guides are giving students feedback as they learn and they practice and they grow through that work. So those formatives, those practices along the way are still really important. Um, you'll see a one through seven grade, not an A through F and seven, eight. Um, and then if, if I don't think we give the A through Fs on the transcripts, right? So those last two points are just ignore them. They're still in 2020. <laughs> um, so we're looking for backwards planning from specific learning outcomes. It's a rich formative feedback cycle. Um, yeah, I think I covered all this. So great. Stuck in 2020 forever. This is some of the grading scales that is really easy to see when it's colored and split out like this. And it's viewable at this link because I'm pretty sure you probably can't read all of those. So again, you can look at it now. You can email with specific questions um, or I'll see you in early October. So um, we really drive to come it might not be coming there we go give meaningful feedback give students an accurate measure of what's expected from them um, from assignments or project work ahead of time not just sort of at the end and create a system that encourages creativity beyond the given assignment so those sevens we're looking for on the scale students to go outside of the typical norm. We can help students brainstorm and give examples up front, but are you presenting to the Como Woodlands Advisory Board about the Como Woodland Management Plan or um, 
maybe it's the Litcoma Lake Association um, after looking at water quality of the lake. Those kind of things, taking it out into the community, teaching others, helping others. Um, um, so some things that is specific to this year, you know, it might be the first time that you as the student are spending a little bit more time researching online at school or on home. Um, and families, this is where you come in to, oh boy, support. There we go. I'm going to go back to that school and decide. Um, support your students. So Common Sense Media is a really great resource. Clicking right on there is a good place to, to have conversations about with your students. Um, and students being open to having this conversation. I know a lot of times you are moving off into independence and you feel like you got this, but um, it's good to have the conversation and just put it all out there at the beginning. Um, it's a great time to set norms about the internet right now. So a shared agreement, a conversation between the family and the student is um, that your student is what is really the best path through. It's helpful um, to think about that we as parents are on the verge of going from parent to consultant. Um, so at this point in the students' lives, we're having conversations more than we're telling students and our, our children what to do. Although we still get to tell you what to do. So um, that's, that's still there. There's still rules and expectations. And, We'll talk about that on the first day of school and what that looks like at school too. So I'm gonna go back to Schoology. Um, it is the online learning management system that we use. And um, there's a video, if you've never used it before, that we'll send out to help you get oriented to it. Um, if you want, turn on the overdue notifications. It notifies you. If it gets overwhelming, turn it off. Um, how often should you check? It is up to your family. You, the student and family should talk about how much do, does the student want to be held accountable? Do they need weekly checks? Are they ready for that independence? Do they need daily checks? Um, you know, that might be a little bit much, but a weekly check is, is a pretty good rule of thumb to start with and then either tapering off or increasing, depending on where you are. If your students in sixth grade and you as students were super organized, you might experience a drastic decline <laughs> in seventh or eighth grade. And that's because your brain is growing and putting all the energy into a different place and not your prefrontal cortex. So um, that's normal and that's okay. And we just support as faculty and students and family. So yeah, oh, that's school with It's exciting and fun. <laughs> so I, there we go, COVID safety. Um, so you can click on here for our safe learning plan, our whole plan. Um, it's, it's a few pages long, but um, what are we really doing? We're wearing masks on buses and in classrooms all the time, um, except for lunch and then it's silent lunch. Um, we're, we're very strict about that. Um, that's, that's what I will tell students. It's not a, that's not a norm. It is a rule and an expectation. Um, we hand, we wash our hands. We social distance. There's quarantine and here's a handy dandy decision tree um, that can sometimes be tricky to navigate. So if you need help, reach out. Quarantine learning is um, if your student or you as the student needs to quarantine, that's what we're doing. Um, and the students will have information posted on Schoology from maybe like week two. We're gonna hope that we can make it through two weeks. So um, how we can help with this is by testing frequently, often as, as much as you're down for it um, and letting us know how that's going for you. Uh, we support vaccination, so if that's um, up your alley, please do so. Reach out if you need help. Silent lunch and 
adults don't eat lunch with the students. So adults is that's another area we can sort of control. One, one thing we do have control over. So the adults will eat at a different time. And then for air filters, um, we've got these fancy HEPA filter things that are, I think a, the pandemic advisory board is helping create a low cost, but very efficient air filters that go in our classroom. And we've also got room air filters and our HVAC system. So we are on it. I feel really good about our plan. So um, I think after being in the building with a whole bunch of staff, um, it feels safe, it feels good. Uh, it feels like we, we all understand the plan too, which is extra important. Stacey, do you have a question? For I have questions from people, yes, that I can share with okay. you. Um, let's see, will the lower adolescent students, will stick with seventh and eighth grade, have language classes like Spanish? Oh, you know, that is, um, the Spanish is the one thing we couldn't make work this year. So, uh, CAS, it, there's a heavy focus on a language component for CAS, which is the Wednesday afternoon thing. So that is where we can put it in. And as a small school, it is the best we could do this year. And um, one area of improvement for next year. Good question. Uh, so can students read books on Kindles at school during silent sustained reading? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we usually say no. So, um, you let me know if you want to talk more about it. <laughs> and we do have a supply of books at school that any student could pick up too. Yeah. Lots um, will lunches be outside when weather allows? Uh, as much as we can. Yeah. Um, when will students find out about their homeroom or advisory and who their guide is and who is in their classes? Uh, who their guide is and their advisor is on Friday, hopefully. And who's in their class is the first day of school. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm the person who sends out the email to students. It's an email merge template that gives them their schedule. The goal is by Friday. If I don't get it done on Friday, I am going to like sit here in my office with my puppy on Saturday morning and get it out. But I'm really hoping we're close to having it ready to go out. So, I'm hoping by Friday. Um, so I promise it's coming and it'll go to your students email, but we'll send parents a note saying that it has been sent uh, so that you'll be able to check in with your student and have them check their email. And if you're if you have a student who's new to Great River this year, we don't have a school email set up for them yet. And so they will get uh, just, just the parents will get the email to start with until they have an email set up. OK, next question. Maybe this is a David thing. Will you have standards about what kinds of masks should be worn? Osterholm is now recommending KN95 or equivalent. Yes, so we've been talking about this as a pandemic advisory team and in the uh, uh, safe return to school plan, we've provided uh, you know the recommendations that the Department of Health has posted specifically around mask type and mask usage. Um, however, I do know that there are recommendations for KN95 masks. And so um, what we're working on is trying to get the highest quality masks we can for as many students as we can. Um, and so, you know, talking about not having like um, scarves and like things like that is the first priority. Um, if you are interested in sending uh, your student with the KN95 mask, of course, that's absolutely recommended and on the list. But we really want to focus, especially first, on on proper usage of mask and wearing of mask and um, wearing the best masks that we possibly can, multi-layered and uh, potentially the three-layer surgical masks and uh, things along those lines. So that's that's where we are at the moment. So. Um. Will students be staying in one location like the end of last year, or will they be moving throughout the day? Oh, no, moving throughout the day. Yep. Multiple teachers, uh, different groups of students. Um, back in person, we're not able to cohort the way that we did last year. So, yep, moving throughout the day. 
I'm trying to do the COVID questions first and I'll circle back to the other ones. Will there be a staggered start and release time? Nope. Um, are there supply lists? <laughs> yep, uh, they are linked in the slide deck and can also send them again. If you haven't received them from me, it means you're not on a list or you've been recently added to the Great River community. So it's been sent out two or three times. Uh, so it means you're not on something. And let's make sure we get you on the list. And I, Stacey, who should they email if they're office, not getting? Office at greatriverschool.org is a good one. Um, we are still working to add all of the new people to the lists. If you uh, filled out the registration forms, we automatically put you on most of our lists. So make sure you did that if you haven't. Um, so yeah, office at greatriverschool.org if you think you're missing stuff though, and we'll figure it out. Um, are teachers vaccinated? Uh, we don't ask that question specifically, right? The, the, oh, I, David, are teachers vaccinated? <laughs> so um, we are in the middle of um, possible change in this direction, certainly. But um, so we haven't uh, uh, recently surveyed staff to find out. It's very tricky to survey staff because we have to do um, a number of legal, there's like legal ramifications to it around what's called a Tennyson warning um, and the you know implications of staff sharing that information with us. And um, when we do know that information about a specific staff member, I had a, I had a parent ask me recently, can I know if my teacher is vaccinated specifically? And so um, even if we ask the teachers, depending on the situation, say there's exposure, um, we can't share with you that information because it is uh, private medical information. So, um, however, there is um, some conversations going on right now. And I think we're gonna be talking as a board, um, both on Thursday and, and moving into the school year, uh, St. Paul Public Schools, for instance, um, opened up the conversation last night at their board meeting about requiring vaccinations for their uh, staff um, in St. Paul Public Schools, and they're voting on it on Friday. So there hasn't been a lot of specific movement in the state of Minnesota yet. The state of Minnesota doesn't require teachers and school staff to be vaccinated. Um, but there will be some conversations with our school board uh, about that um, uh, starting I would guess on Thursday night, but also moving into the school year and the first board meeting of the school year in uh, September. We have, just wanna give people a heads up, we have about 10 more minutes that we can be with the seventh and eighth grade folks. And if we'll probably see some more attendees coming on, getting ready for the upper adolescent when that is completely is following us at 6.30. Um, so let's get through a few more questions. Dan Ratliff asks, when will we receive information about middle school sports? And I can actually take that one. So middle school sports are usually through List League. Karen Anway is our big canoe and aftercare program director, and she gives information out about that. I know that soccer is the first sport that they do. We do have a coach and are looking for a second coach. So if you're interested in helping uh, with soccer, please reach out to her at bigcanoe at greatriverschool.org. Um, and that will mean we can have more teams and more ability for more students to participate. Uh, that usually starts a couple weeks into the school year. So expect communications to come about, about that pretty soon. Um, where, when or where can I get an individual schedule showing students main teacher to report to? Where my child will go on the first day of school? What is the actual start date? What is the start time? What is the end time? When is the school build, building actually open? I can answer some of those. Um, so actual start date of school is the day after Labor Day. So September 7th, Tuesday um, is the first day of school. The start time is 8.30. The building will open up for adolescent students at 8 a.m. Um, and they can come in at that time. Uh, at 3.10, school is done and they must be out of the school building by 3.30 unless they have um, an activity, a school sponsored activity that has supervision. Um, let's see here. When I send you the individual student schedule, I believe I already answered that. Um, their main te teacher that they report to, so seventh and eighth grade teachers have multiple teachers. Tammy, would you say the advisor is kind of the go-to if a parent has a question? Yep. 
So that will be on your student schedule that they get via email, um, would be their advisor name. And that would be the, the first person you'd contact if you have a concern, and then they'll filter it to whoever it needs to be. And then once they have classes um, and they're going to them, you can reach out to individual teachers too, um, as needed. Um, I think, oh, the first day of school, Tammy, do you want to talk about entering the school in the morning or are we going to send a further communication about that? Like, um, I think it's good to send further communication, but we do a hand, uh, well, we did a handshake. It'll probably be a wave um, or, you know, something like that. Um, greeting students every morning and sending them on their way to their advisor, Ree. So Tuesday, um, you'll see us and we'll help students know where to go there signs, you're looking for your advisory. There's students, both new and new seventh graders and returning eighth graders that know where to go in the building. So we'll help each other out. So um, not to worry, it is a bit of community building. Great. Um, couple more questions. Can my student turn in medication and forms to their advise, advisor on the first day of school? Um, it should be dropped off at the office. So your, your student can bring it in, but you should go directly to the office and drop it off. Um, our health office coordinator's name is Dan Wilder, and he will also be in the health office in the morning that first day of school. So they could even go directly to the health office to hand their meds and forms to him. Um, let's see here, quick. I'm going to do a non-COVID question and then we'll go back to those. When will the goats return and who is in charge of taking care of them? <laughs> the students are in charge of taking care of the goats. Um, right now, the goat fence is insecure and it's one of our things we have to figure out how to fix. Um, they're, they're coming back, hopefully. I know there's students in the upper adolescence who have big plans. Um, so we'll see about the cast projects as they come through. Um, I think I'm going to run through the BIPOC student support slide. Um, there's a BIPOC group that meets weekly, weekly um, on Wednesday and Monday and Wednesday, ACE after school club. It's not only for BIPOC, um, but it's a good place to go for both BIPOC and non-BIPOC students. Um, and Tuesday, Thursday check-ins is needed um, during the advisory time. So students can check in with their BIPOC leader who is Tia Gordy. Um, so um, let, let us know how we can be supportive later. Um, so keys to success. I mean, it's always so slow. Don't forget to support your students. Um, students, don't forget you need support. And advisor is the person to go to for like general stuff. Core guides, your occupations, your humanities guide, your creative expression for specific questions about their class or their grade book or an assignment or something like that. And independent work journal is sort of like a planner. It's where we start. If you were in elementary Montessori, this is familiar to you. If you weren't, we'll make it familiar. Um, we sort of start as if everybody forgot. And it's a good point for student leadership as well. So you can look for that as families to help your students uh, stay on track. Power School and Schoology, check that. Power School is at the end of term. Schoology is during the term. There's usually follow-up work every night. So helping your students manage their time and all of their commitments. This is a big change for um, seventh graders. So how are you going to talk about this as a family? And students, don't forget, you need support in this area. Um, practical life. So, you know, I talked and kind of joked a bit before about students doing chores at school and that they should do them at home. That is a very helpful skill in terms of learning the executive functioning skills, um, especially things like making dinner. If your student can make dinner or lunch or breakfast or something like that um, for the family, that directly relates to be able to plan out their day, their future life, their future jobs. Um, 
So those more complex tasks where they have to really think through it is good. Also feeding the dog every day because there's a self-correcting mechanism if you have a dog or a cat because um, you'll, you guys will meet Petunia if you haven't already. Five o'clock comes around 4.30 on the dot and she's letting us know she is starving. So that self-correcting mechanism there um, are really helpful to school uh, skills. And oh, love, understanding, communication. This is really hard, um, students. So you are changing and growing every day. So families, we're greeting that with love, understanding, and communication, and forgiveness of when either party, the, the, the adults or the students, kind of melt down. So a heavy dose of that. And I'll send you program director update. Um, it will be a link to a running Google Doc. So if you forgot what I said, or you wanna look back, it's always on the same document. So bookmark that. And there's info nights throughout. And I feel like there's something on the bottom. No. Okay, so cool supplies. I'll send you the supply list, but it's listed right there. If you haven't bought indigenous people's history, that was um, directly tied to our Odyssey curriculum. So maybe hold on that. If you've bought it, you'll need it next year maybe. So you can pass it on or whatever. Bring those school supply lists the first day of school. You'll have time to put in, organize your locker and sort of like ground into your space. Make sure you bring a water bottle every day. Um, the water fountains are covered and locked. So if you're thirsty, you need a water bottle. So make sure families make sure to shove it in their bag. They'll forget it every day or make sure they bring it home on Friday so you can wash it <laughs> um, and dress for the weather because we have recess every day. If you need help, please reach out. And what do I bring? Some more information there. Uh, uh, oh my God, how to help. Our parent engagement group is for all caregivers to support their students with. Um, information will be coming out there from, I believe, Heather Thomas. We've got our Facebook group that isn't, as David said, run by our school, but run by parents instead. Um, so information on that's coming out and a BIPOC advisory committee. So if you'd like to support that work, um, contact Anu at GD and Great River School. So that is it. Stacey, fire away. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I've been trying to answer via typing and I know we're, we're at time and the upper adolescents are joining right now uh, to start. So upper adolescent folks, we'll just answer a couple more questions for seven, eight, and then we will move on to you. Um, I think I saw a question about will students be able to fill water bottles? The answer yep. is yes, we have water water filling stations in the school. So please bring send them with a water bottle that's well labeled with their name. Um, there's a few other questions here that I don't think we have the time to give it justice. One question in particular about the decision to cancel key experiences. Um, David, I think we did send an additional communication about that, didn't we? Yes, though, so um, there was a specific communication about it. Um, and also I'm happy to, um, you know, I have been sort of flooded with emails, but I'm trying to get back to people. And if you have a, a specific question about it, it was a super difficult decision. And it feels like a real loss in so many ways. And also um, felt like the right decision to prioritize in-person learning and equitable experiences for everyone. And, um, and so we are working really hard, as Tammy said earlier, on creating um, some experiences for students to, to have that same sort of community building experience um, or similar community building experiences within the um, upcoming school weeks. So, um, and we're still talking, of course, about trips later in the year as well. So, yeah. So I'm sorry if I didn't get all your questions answered, but if you have more, please just email us at, at office at greatriverschool.org and we can get you more answers. We'll forward it to Tammy if it's something she needs to answer. Um, and we'll try to get all your questions answered.